Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to this afternoon's event. This is the official virtual launch of the Donegal Place brand. A lot of work has gone into this initiative and it's going to be the way we see Donegal and the way Donegal is seen both locally, nationally and internationally in the 21st century. It's a very important piece of work and it's my pleasure um, to help see this introduction done. My name is Donald Kavanagh. I'm a journalist on Highland Radio. It's my uh, honor to be the MC for this particular event. Um, as you're all watching what's happening and uh, you know, telling all your friends about it via your social media, we invite you to use the hashtag Donegal, it's in our DNA. Uh, hashtag Donegal, it's in our DNA. And Stephen will put that message into the chat as well. If that hashtag were to start running, it would be very good indeed. And the importance of that phrase is going to become very evident over the course of the next 60 minutes or so. So without further ado, I am going to quieten myself and I'm going to introduce the Coherlach of Donegal County Council. Would you please uh, welcome and give your best attention to Councillor Rena Donaghy. Thank you very much, Donald. Minister for Agriculture, Charlie McConnell Chief Executive Friends. Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to the official launch of the new Donegal Place brand. As Cahirla of Donegal County Council, it gives me great pleasure to warmly welcome you today to this event from wherever you are connected all in person to our beautiful country. What we hope that with the gradual reopening of our county, we will be able to do so in the near future. We are delighted with the response and feedback already received from the attendance today. The pride and passion for Donegal action to our love for Donegal is evident for all to see. We hope you will all play your part in promoting Donegal through this new unified identity. With the growing importance of Ireland's regions, the, revise, the, the, remote, the rise of remote working and the recent positive announcement of business expansions and investment in our towns and villages, this really is a time of opportunity for Donegal. Our new brand provides a great platform to help showcase Donegal as a genuinely great place to live, to work, to invest, to study and to explore. This is a busy itinerary for today's launch with contributions from our Chief Executive John McLaughlin and Minister Charlie mcconnell -Ogue, who will join me in officially launching the new, new brand. Mark O'Connell of OCO, who helped to deliver this project for Donegal, will share some of the fantastic new visuals of the brand and a number of ambassadors who will bring our new brand identity to life. I hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon and I look forward to hearing more about our new Donegal Place brand over the coming weeks and months. Go roll my hand. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Rina. And uh, without further ado, I will hand you over to the Chief Executive of Donegal County Council, Mr. John McLaughlin. John. Thank you, Donald. Ministers, uh, Kierlach, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'd like to join with our Kierlach, Councillor Rina Donny, in welcoming everyone to today's launch of the new Donegal Place brand and new Donegal.ie website. There is already a strong shared vision for Donegal and this is highlighted in the County Development Plan, which sees Donegal as a connected place with a strong, competitive and innovative economy that can sustain a population of upwards of 200,000 people in the county. This new Donegal brand has a core role to play in achieving this shared vision by developing a strong visual representation for Donegal that can be shared across various platforms. This work began last September and has involved significant consultation with a wide range of stakeholders. And I'd like to thank everyone who has engaged in this process. In particular, Donegal residents, elected members, various interest, interest and business groups, and national organizations who have been generous with their time, knowledge, and insight on the county. Your input has been vital in developing this unique 
and compelling brand for Donegal. The need for a place brand has been identified as a key vehicle to promote the region under a unified voice and will assist in delivering our shared objectives of driving population growth, promoting economic development and job creation. I'd also like to thank the media for their continued support with our various initiatives to promote the county. Both individually and collectively, our media helps to deliver a, a hugely important message, not just to the people of Donegal, but to, also to a, a national and international audience. And we look forward to continuing to work with you to build a strong, positive reputation for Donegal as a great place to live, work, visit, study, and invest in. I'd also like to ask you to follow and engage with our new place brand through our social media platforms. And please do tell family and friends about this exciting initiative and how we can collectively tell our story, tell the story of Donegal and all that we have to offer. And lastly, just a, a special word of thanks to our economic development team, head up by Gary Martin, director, Anne Marie Conlon, and Steve, Stephen Perry for organizing all of this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, John. In early 2009, I was covering a meeting of Donegal County Council and uh, the late former councillor, Dennis McGonagall, came up to me and told me he would not be seeking re-election later that year. Um, I did what I always do in such instances and I shoved a microphone in his face. And as I did so, I put it to him that uh, whoever followed him would have big shoes to fill. He said, no, he said, don't worry, we've got a really good candidate, his young farmer from O'Carn Way, a really good young lad. And that was the first time I heard the name Charlie McConnell Oak. I think it's fair to say that Charlie has filled those shoes. And indeed, it's fair to say he has exceeded expectations. Would you please welcome the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Charlie McConnell Oak. Thanks. Thanks very much, Donald, for that lovely introduction. It's, it's lovely to hear. Um, uh, my, my, my mentor, Dennis McGonigal, referred to in, in, in the introduction as well, and, and indeed um, a former former chairman on Cahirlock of Donegal County Council and somebody who um, I was very glad to fill his boots and to, to continue his legacy. And it's a pleasure to be here with you all today uh, and to join with uh, Cahirla, um Rena, Rena Donaghy, and with the, our new CEO. And congratulations to our new CEO, John McLaughlin. Um, uh, it's great to see uh, any showmen uh, taking their, their right for place uh, on on the stage. Um, so best luck, John, with uh, with 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 the uh, with with your term as as leader of the of our county. And, um, and and ladies and gentlemen, and, and special guests today, it's it's a pleasure to be with you all this this very important day, um, and for this this wonderful for this wonderful launch. So um, I'm glad to join with the the, the mayor in in, in welcoming you all here. And as a proud uh, Donegal man, I'm, I'm very much delighted to, to help launch the Donegal Place brand with you all vir virtually today. And I think we've all got very used to the, the virtual engagements over the last year. And um, But uh, I think certainly um, the, the, the news yesterday and the pathway ahead is one which, which uh, provides a lot of light for all of us at the end of the tunnel. Um, and uh, to, to get back to the situation where we can see one another again in person again. And indeed, very importantly, um, uh, develop on the, the, the work that's been done in this Donegal Place Plan and, and welcome people from across the country and indeed across the world to, 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 uh, to share in the, the glory and the, the, the tremendous uh, gifts we have here in our own county. Um, all in all, Donegal reflects the best that Ireland has to offer, um, from our people to our natural beauty, um, to the investment opportunities and connectivity. Uh, our county embodies all that is great about Ireland. And I'm very proud that uh, Donegal has retained its culture, its heritage and its distinct assets, uh, which it encapsulate everything that is good about Ireland and which is very much built into our DNA. Um, our mesmerizing landscape from our hills to our valleys to our beaches has shaped the personality of our ancestors and contributed to art, music, uh, poetry, uh, which, is, uh, which is world renowned indeed and which we continue to hold uh, very dear. The, the landscape too has provided an important economic benefit uh, in tourism from our, from, from our island and from beyond. And tourism has had an important impact on our past economy and continues to be a direct and indirect source of business opportunity and employment. Our direct relationship with Northern Ireland shapes who we are as a people too. Uh, and we're uniquely tuned to the importance of close relationships and building bridges. Both aspects of Donegal will play a key role in the, the future of the Northwest, but also of, our, of our, our island. As infrastructure has improved in the county, the growth of new and emerging business sectors in the region has increased from technology companies to multinational pharmaceutical companies. 
while we stay close to our, our roots and the, the ideals of our ancestors, we've learned to adapt to new ways of doing business and to new technologies. This has led to new streams of direct employment in the county, which has in turn led to spin-off businesses near the locations of these business near their locations, and has led to special speciality educational courses under the leadership of LYAT, which again encourages students to come and study in, our, in Donegal. This has been an, had an incredible impact on our county and has ma had major economic benefits as well. Crucially, our, our traditional sectors such as crafts, agriculture and fisheries have evolved through innovation, embracing technology and focusing on sustainability and remain a crucial part of our DNA. Agriculture, fisheries and food production are of particular interest to me, obviously, and fall directly within my ministry. Each of these sectors is embedded in our local communities in Donegal and in our DNA as Donegal people. Each of us, whether townies or from the countryside, have a direct link to food production, whether through employment, business ownership, farming or fishing, or simply purchasing food. And these sectors continue to be an important employer and part of Donegal's economy. Uh, and my ambition is to maintain that link in the future. In my opinion, Donald, this new place brand represents all that is good in Donegal and encapsulates who we are and what we are. As we move from the difficult days of lockdown, we see emerging trends of a permanent increase in demand for remote working. And given Donegal's beauty and natural pull, we have an opportunity to increase tourist numbers, but also numbers of those who wish to work remotely but live in our fine county. This brand gives us the opportunity to provide a strong identity for the region, allows us to promote it uh, as a great place to work, to live, to invest, to study, and to explore. And it showcases Donegal and everything that is good about it to a national and international audience. Congratulations to all involved in this project, and in particular to all those involved in Donegal County Council's Economic Development Unit, uh, and led by Mark O'Connell and everyone who has played their part, including Stephen and, and Gary, and on the leadership of John and our, our mayor, in making today happen, from and indeed to the many ambassadors uh, who, who participated in the research along the way. To echo John's words earlier too, please follow up and engage with our, our place brand through the social media platforms shared today. And please do tell family and friends about this exciting initiative and how we can collectively promote Donegal as, as a great place to live and work in and explore and indeed study. As you will see soon, we have some wonderful ambassadors involved to help promote the brand and their contributions after me, I'm sure, will be inspiring and thought provoking. So thank you all again and I hope you address or enjoy the rest of the launch. Thank you, Donald. Thank you very much indeed, Minister Charlie McConnell up there, the Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine. Uh, as uh, Minister McConnell said there, Donegal has a proud history in terms of food production, in terms of agriculture, in terms of fisheries, in terms of manufacturing, and you'll hear much more about that as the uh, afternoon goes on. Donegal also has a huge proud tradition uh, in arts. There are many artists in all aspects of the arts in this county. We are blessed with uh, some really good ones. One of Ireland's best poets, indeed, is a resident of Remelton. Denise Blake writes poetry. She is a, a teacher. She shares what she writes in a wonderful way. And she is as comfortable reading her poetry in the cottage bar as she is reading on Sunday miscellany on RTE. In other words, an absolute Donegal woman to the core. And it's my pleasure to introduce a special poem. This is Donegal by Denise Blake. This is Donegal. Dunanal, Chicano, County Donegal home. The view of the sea as you drive into Moval from Kuldaf. Sheer cliffs of Sleeve League. Sunset at the back of Iron Moor. Starlit skies over a mountain. Double rainbows. The green and gold tweed of the landscape and the built tapestry of our villages and towns. This is Donegal. Emigrants once leapt through Clohanili to the Bridge of Tears, Drahud Nanor, travelling onwards, heart sore, carrying Donegal with them. Dunanal, Donegal, home. The county is calling, home. The ancients watch us from Doe Castle, on Greenan Fort, Beltany Stone Circle, 
with Rory Gallagher, the hiring fair children, the flight of the earls and statues. All the teachers and coaches and every sport who give up their time to mentor our youth. The athletes who may never win a league or a medal, but turn up for training on rainy days. We get rainy days in Donegal. If you can't see Tory Island from Fulcara, it's raining. If you can see Tory, it'll rain soon. This is Donegal, what fills the eyes, fills the heart. The long mountain pass into Ardara, crescent of sands at Port New, boats at Bombeg, murals, culture centres and galleries, the curve of the pole star. This is Donegal, what fills the ears, fills the soul. Our musicians, our singers, our poets, our actors, our playwrights, or just the way our accents ebb and flow from Bundorn through the Lagan to Malin Head. This is Donegal, Ireland's DNA, the push and pull of the people, commerce and community, the gift of place we gave to our children to be rural and urban, in bustle and solitude, her pulse is strong. Dunanal, Tirkano, County Donegal, the place to call home. Absolutely beautiful. That was uh, Denise Blake with her poem, This is Donegal. And I think that, that was the perfect place to place the poem, actually, because We've now considered Donegal in all its beauty and all its quirks and all its uh, wonder. Now it's time to put some flesh on the bones of what we're talking about this evening and look at this new brand, look at where the Donegal, it's in our DNA phrase, came from and look at how this whole idea came to be. Um, the project overview is being presented by Mark O'Connell of OCO, they're the Economic Development Specialists, and consultants to Donegal County Council on this project. So it's uh, over to you, Mark. Uh, thank you very much, Donald. And uh, Denise has clearly given me a, a hard act to follow there. I, th I thought it was a very evocative and uh, moving piece and captures perfectly the, the sentiment that in some way we're trying to achieve with this uh, new place brand launch. So my name is Mark O'Connell. I just wanna uh, welcome everyone, particularly the Cahirlach, um, Rena, Minister uh, McConnellog, uh, all the council members. Um, and uh, what I want to sort of talk you through here is the journey that we've been on. Um, let me just share the screen here, if that's okay. Uh, I hope everybody can see it all okay. Is that? Uh, Thumbs up, yeah. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the journey and then how it derived the, the, the creative and influenced the creative and um, how it can be executed now as something we can all be, be proud of and rally around. Um, OCO Global, as uh, Donald explained, is a economic development consulting firm uh, with 120 staff based in, um, in Belfast, but with a presence in 17 offices around the world, uh, including uh, Dublin. And um, we uh, teamed up with uh, uh, Judith O'Doherty, who represents uh, place branding experts, Utopia, to deliver uh, the solution, the, the, the Donegal place, place brand. Now, it was a real pleasure to work in this project at a personal level, because I have strong family connections with Donegal, as indeed so does Judith. And we, um, you know, it was a, a sort of work of uh, passion as much as uh, uh, as creativity, and I hope you'll uh, agree that some of that comes through in the execution. So look, um, you know, you're not, none of us are working in a vacuum, and this has been a really, uh, as remarks earlier, have, have confirmed a really um, unprecedented year. Um, there's a unique constellation of factors, which uh, I think give Donegal today an unprecedented uh, opportunity to launch this new place brand. Uh, so 
the pandemic clearly has, 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 has been a massive game changer. We've got Brexit and the implications are still playing out for Northern Ireland, for the UK and specifically for Donegal. Um, we've got obviously the phenomenon of remote working and how that has transformed um, you know, peripheral locations like Donegal and rural Ireland in general. We've got happily uh, represented by Minister McConnell, a, 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 a political uh, sort of priority to, to level up the regions uh, and ensure that the regional voice and the regional prosperity uh, comes to the fore. Uh, we've had the sort of happy coincidence of uh, being sort of relatively restrained in travel and so staycations and glamping, I think that represents, uh, have really benefited. Uh, Donegal and other, um, you know, natural wonders across up and down the Wild Atlantic Way. And finally, but not least, we've got a very pro-Irish uh, uh, American president in the first and the highest office, uh, who is dead keen uh, to retain the, the, the advantages of the Good Friday Agreement and support Ireland's continued uh, economic prosperity and stability. So a, ni a nice constellation there. Equally, Donegal is not standing still. We've got upgrades uh, across the physical, the, the 10T, and the digital 5G infrastructure, uh, and that's uh, drawing in a credible base of world-class tech uh, and life sciences investors like Abbott, Randox, and Primerica, um, as well as a thriving local enterprise base who we're going to hear more from later. Equally, uh, the connectivity um, of the Wild Atlantic Way, and I think the longest stretch of coastline on the whole Wild Atlantic Way journey is represented in Donegal. Um, we've got um, the, the upgrades to um, LYIT, to the Technical University, and the ETB network to continue to um, uh, build uh, the, the talent pool and attract uh, st students to Donegal to, 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 to run their education from there. And, and lastly, but not least, there's a, the unique Gaelic tradition uh, through the Gael uh, the culture and enterprise base that's advanced through the work of Uderas. So I think we've got some unique uh, opportunities on our doorstep, marrying the macro with the local. Look, you know, as they say, this isn't in OCO uh, terms our, our first rodeo. We've worked with quite a lot of other regions facing similar challenges. I can point to Cornwall, England, where peripherality hasn't stood in the way of their adoption of remote medicine, and even the pandemic has accelerated that. Um, we've got Portland, Maine, where challenges of, around positioning within a very busy New England sort of uh, tourism space. And more closer to home, uh, we were responsible for the Cork Can um, uh, campaign, which was the economic brand for Cork City and region, which has launched over the last couple of years and been a big success. But look, just in terms of how we did the work, which is important to understand, um, you know, the Donegal Place brand, I hope you'll agree, is more than just a pretty new logo. It was derived from extensive consultations, and I, I, I'm grateful for, I think, over 60 individual contributors and some group sessions with uh, all of the educators, enterprise, uh, local government people. Um, and really, without your support and contributions and ideas, this wouldn't have been possible. Um, and, it, you know, the assumptions that underpin this brand are empirical in nature. They're data points that uh, we can defend the brand and defend the ambitions for the brand. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to say we had really fantastic, it's been called out already, but I want to just repeat it, fantastic uh, project direction and encouragement from the economic development team at the council, led by Gary, but ably supported by Anne-Marie and Stephen. Uh, and they've been great to work with. It was a, a real pleasure. So look, let's uh, have the drum roll here and, 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 and sort of unveil the story behind DNA. So DNA, as we know, are the building blocks of life. Uh, and we believe Donegal um, is a microcosm of our nation, all that's great about the island of Ireland. Its character defines its, uh, its people and its landscape. It's connected to the rest of the country, uh, physically and spiritually, and through its diaspora around the world. I mean, you can take the person from Donegal, but you cannot take Donegal from the person, as I think our poet or poetess ably summed up. Um, and its oral and cultural traditions are alive today in Ireland's DNA. 
Um, it's welcoming and inclusive to 47 foreign nationalities, so it represents the New Ireland. Um, and then as we think about the sort of uh, economic and technical and technological ambition, the DNA brand connects um, our ambition uh, to the industries of the future from renewables to biosciences and fintech, as, as it, it, it will be shown in the showreel, uh, turf, tech and talent all in one place. Now, leading global investors are already here and expanding as we're gonna hear from, but there's not enough of them. And we hope that this brand and this uh, 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 sort of vote of confidence in the new uh, sort of future-proof Donegal will attract more. And lastly, you know, Donegal scores extremely well across the counties of Ireland in tourism benchmarks, but we all recognize that we need to diversify our dependencies and develop our product to attract uh, the visitors of the future, whether they're from Asia or uh, Latin America or, or other Europe. Now, the symbolism of DNA is important, and I've just uh, uh, would like you to reflect for a minute on the fingerprint, which is the unique biomarker of any, every individual on earth. And Donegal is unique, and we believe this fingerprint image reflects that. Interestingly, the Celtic symbol or swirl is for family in the mythology, birth, life, and death, past, present, and future. But it also speaks to the strength of familial bonds, overcoming adversity. And we know in that space, Donegal is resilient. And the circuit board talks to connectivity and our technological ambition. Unless we forget, the D and the Donegal brand itself is extremely powerful. So it would be reckless not to include that in the execution. Just a quick word on the colors now, and it's been mentioned even in, 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 in uh, Denise's uh, uh, introduction. The colors here reflect the diverse landscape of Donegal, as well as the blue and greens of Ireland's national brands like the Department of Agriculture, IDA and Enterprise Ireland. So we're, um, you know, positioning Donegal right up there with, you know, Ireland's DNA, we'll call it. You'll see on the execution here, there's, there's two versions. There's Ireland's DNA or DNA Naharin, and there's also, it's in our DNA, Tashe in our DNA. So the Internal one is it's in our DNA. So we're going to use that in the county among our stakeholders and our visitors. But for the external audiences, investors and so forth, we're going to use Ireland's DNA. I hope you'll see the subtle distinction and appreciate the cleanness and uh, progressiveness of the execution and fair play to um, the council for having you know, the courage to back this very progressive and what I hope will be a future-proof brand. So there's just the different versions in, you know, Irish and Gaelic and different colorways. There's lots of versatility, as you can see. Now, just we believe this brand works well across all our economic ambitions, uh, whether it's to, to attract more, you know, investors or retain our workforce and get them uh, economically active in the county uh, through the technology and connect connectivity and connectedness. There's also the tourism piece where you know, the Wild Atlantic Way connects to the World Wide Web uh, and there's unique um, cultural experiences to be had. Um, there's the living experience, the ties that bind the community, et cetera. And then there's the study, the world-class centers of excellence like LYIT, the Technical University and the ETB. So we think it works well across all those. And then the wordplay I think has great scope here with the DNA that works extremely well phonetically in the Gaelic Dunanal. Uh, it also plays well to some of the ambitions that we heard and the sentiment that we picked up in the consultations, diversity, natural, authentic, um, digital, native, ambitious. I mean, there's a lot to work with here and this is only the start of the journey. I'm showing you here just to prove out to you that there are um, uh, great executions that work well with the DNA. So you've got a, a tourism example here and a technology and skills example. You've got an invest example that works equally well in English and in Gaelic. And then of course, um, there are opportunities for co-branding in this case with, L, with the Institute. And we'd hope that our stakeholders across the county uh, and nationally will work with us and adopt the brand and use it 
uh, both locally, nationally and internationally. And here, just to show you the versatility, is a couple of newspaper executions, um, a sort of carousel on the on the mobile device that uh, circulates the different DNA and and the the the, the brand marker, just different executions there. And then we're we're hoping that it'll be adopted in signage, you know, to give the Wild Atlantic Way signage a run for its money. Um, but there's a lot to like here and how it. How it, how it sits out in the sort of natural environment. It works on public buildings too, both in English and Irish. I think it's very clean and very modern. And then finally, you know, merchandising, or I think the Americans call it swag, I learned uh, at a trade show. You can, you can hand out lots of these uh, you know, or, or, or have sponsorship for different executions with t-shirts and water bottles and diaries and so forth or notebooks. And then finally, it gives me great pleasure to be able to also, um, at the same time, simultaneously launch the Donegal IE brand, where you can see uh, the place brand on the website for the, for the council and explore and navigate all the different pillars of living, working, investing, studying in Donegal. We think this is a great window into the uh, potential for Donegal. Uh, and you can, there's a, I'm about to hand over now to a showreel um, to, to explain the execution, but in case there's any um, wobbles with the technology and the streaming, it's only a minute and a half long, and you can actually get it on the on the website itself if you're stuck. So, Gura Moyogat, and uh, best wishes for the new uh, brand campaign. Thank you. Back to Donal, is it? Yeah. DNA. It's what makes us unique, but also what binds us. What we pass on to others here in Donegal and all over the world. We seamlessly combine turf, tech, and talent. Donegal is dynamic, new and ambitious. Our DNA connects our past and our future. It's what encourages us to drive, nurture and advance. We have been in Donegal for five generations. We are educated, skilled and progressive. We are digital natives with aspiration. Our DNA is shared. It gives us a sense of belonging and connection. We cherish our culture while embracing new adventures. We embody all that is great about our island. It's wild and inspiring. It helps us to express who we are. It all comes back to the same thing, that unique bond that's a part of everyone who is from here, lives here, visits here. It's Ireland's DNA. Tashego Smur Inning. It's in our DNA. It's Ireland's DNA. Donegal. It's in our DNA. Asastun and Almich. Tashagas Smerin. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. And uh, well done to the team in OCO and also to the Economic Development Unit in Donegal County Council as well. And it, it's clear that from a collaboration like that, something really special can emerge. And uh, We've seen the evidence, I think, of, of that this evening. So the question now, I suppose, for everyone is, we have this new brand for Donegal, and uh, it, it's been delivered, and it, it's been executed, uh, to use the word that uh, Mark used. 
So what happens next? And I suppose if you want to promulgate something and you want to promote something, what you need are people that will take that message and bring it forward. And I'm not going to introduce you to a number of ambassadors who are going to do just that. Now, rather than go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, I'll just uh, very briefly tell you who our five ambassadors will be, and then they'll just uh, speak in turn. We're going to begin with two representatives uh, to tell us the Primerica Prudential story, uh, the tech evolution. Kieran Harvey is the Senior Managing Director and uh, CIO of Primerica, and uh, Charlene Kennedy is Vice President of Planning and Analysis, as well as the CEO of PGIM Private Capital, who are responsible for Prudential's private debt investment in Europe. We're going to hear from Paul Hannigan, who's the President of Letterkenny Institute of Technology. Uh, a hugely important uh, part, obviously, of the community in Donegal. Uh, we're going to hear from Rosie Temple, who you saw in that video, obviously. Uh, Rosie has been involved with McGee, who have been in Donegal since uh, 1866, which is even uh, longer than some of the people in, in this call. And uh, we're also going to see a video featuring um, Killian McLaughlin, the founder of the Wild Ireland Animal Sanctuary, which has been one of the huge success stories, I think, of tourism in recent years there in, in South Michonne. And uh, the great news for Kieran is he's now been allowed to reopen. So Killian will um, not be with us live. He's prepared a video because he's too busy actually working, which I think is something a lot of people want to be doing at the moment. So they're going to be our, our five ambassadors. So without further ado, I'll hand you over first to Kieran and to Charlene. Good afternoon, uh, everybody in, in this side of the Atlantic, and good morning to everybody in the, the far side of the Atlantic. Um, fascinating program, and, and when I was asked to be part of this, I, I jumped at the chance. And the whole concept of of Donegal in our DNA couldn't be uh, truer from us here in America. We talk so many times about putting on the green and gold jersey, and sometimes we even talk about the black and amber jersey. Not that much about maybe the maroon one that hangs around Letterkenny, but, but, but definitely the black and amber one, but, but very proud and to be able to talk uh, about uh, Donegal and Primerica. As you can probably tell from the accent, I'm born and bred a Letterkenny townie, as uh, Charlie was calling us there earlier. And uh, I, I never dreamt of working for such a global brand as Prudential growing up here in Letterkenny. You know, it's such a privilege uh, to be from Letterkenny and, and, and to work with this company. I live about three minutes uh, from the office and even 15 minutes by the bike, um, which I do take every so often. I, I was lucky to be one of the first eight uh, hired by Prudential here in Letterkenny just a short while, about 21 years ago uh, in 2000. Uh, and I've had the privilege of two expat assignments across the US where, where I did get to um, portray the, the, the Donegal brand. And I'm about to embark on the third um, expat assignment and move across to the US, which I hope to uh, be continuing to promote the, the Donegal brand. Remembering back to when we were set up all that long time ago, I remember a top exec giving a speech saying they had very ambitious plans to grow to 150 staff uh, out of Letterkenny. I remember us all being a bit shocked at that, thinking we'd be doing well to get to 50, never mind 150. And we were doing two services. It was uh, software development and QA. We actually started in a very small training room in a place uh, called FOSS uh, that everybody in Ireland is quite familiar with, but, but doesn't um, goes under a different name now. We didn't have a clue what the art of the possible was going to be for this location. It spun out of the need to reduce costs coming out of Y2K and the expensive consultants Prudential has, and when I think back over it, and I think what was some of the key success criteria, and we're really seeing that here today, it was really the strong partnerships and the can-do attitude of everybody on this call and everybody we got to interact with. I think of organizations like the IDA, who opened so many doors, the LYAT, who have partnered so well with us over the years, tailoring the education syllabus to, to suit our needs, and always great partners. Then I think about the Donegal County Council and the Letterkenny Town Council. Both have facilitated so many requests over the years from roads to helping us secure broadband for our employees in very remote access uh, areas and, and really advancing the town um, to support our needs. I also think of the Chamber of Commerce and I see uh, a few of the leaders from that world 
on here today, both at a national level and an American chamber, and of course our, our local ones here in Letterkenny as well, always been fantastic partners and support. Over the years, these partnerships grew across the Northwest uh, and into the Northern Ireland as well, which there is a great bond between um, both constituents. Uh, and we see the likes of University of Ulster, McGee, uh, Derry City, and even Queens come into it. We've had great uh, partnership with the likes of business in the community, junior achievement, and many more uh, social partners that really help us combine our technology our, our high-end skills with the community as well. So it really is a, a strong place to be. And I think back to the original days, the draw was all about the mammy factor, but now it's much more about the work-life balance. You know, the mammy factor was where the mothers would take our local job advertisement and papers and send it to their children living ab abroad to get them to come home um, to Ireland. But as we started to evolve as an organization, and get into the higher skills. We need to expand our, uh, our, our, our catchment areas as well. And that led us to looking outside of Ireland, across the UK, and then further afield. We heard about the, I think it was 47 nationalities locally here earlier. We actually have 37 nationalities uh, employed here in, in Primerica, which is really fascinating. And over the years, the organization grew. I got the privilege to go to El Paso and set up uh, a very like uh, organization and then to Newark. And we also have strong branches across in Asia as well. But looking back into Letterkenny, um, over the years and the time, we became the largest software house outside of Dublin in Ireland, which is something to say when, you, when you're looking at this uh, small town in, in Letterkenny. So we had over 1,600 employees and we were doing over 200 different types of jobs, covering everything from any possible programming language you can think of in financial services. And we had some very specialized and sophisticated high-end technologists and architects working within the organization. On the business side, we evolved into things like creative services, data science, actuarial. We, we have a very strong fund and investment uh, services function that I'll not go into too much detail because Charlene's going to cover uh, in a little bit more detail. But a few years back, around right about uh, 2019, we realized that the organ it was time for the organization we built here in Letterkenny to really expand its wings and to look beyond this one company in Prudential that we supported. And over the last few years, it's been a big part of my life, but, but that exercise culminated in the partnership we announced last year with TCS, where our services division transferred to uh, TCS with a view to providing these services to more companies like Prudential. And I'm delighted to, to let you all know that that really has proven the point. It's really gone from strength to strength. From speaking to the guys that run that organization, I believe they're supporting over 10 companies already, which, which is fantastic. And you know, tying this story a little bit back into DNA, like talent development and the skills we get in this area are really within our DNA and the work-life balance, the, the, the cultural culture, the entrepreneurial spirit is, is really what we're about. And we talk an awful lot about that. And, and as I think about that, and I think about the services organization, so we moved part of the work into TCS. Then over the last few years, we've built a very strong financial uh, business organization here in Letterkenny. And that organization will remain in Letterkenny and will still be part of Prudential. And to that, I'm going to hand over to one of our own who's developed and now is the CEO of that organization. And that is Charlene Kennedy. And Charlene can give you a little bit of insight about how that organization goes. Charlene. Thank you, Kieran. Um, well, to formally introduce myself, my name is Charlene Kennedy. And as Kieran mentioned, I'm the CEO of a business called PGM Private Capital Ireland. But I will give a little bit more detail um, on that in a bit. But to briefly maybe give a bit of background on myself. Um, I left Donegal at 18 to study law in NUIG. Um, I moved to the UK after college, joining PwC and spending a number of years over there. Um, I returned to Ireland, well, Dublin in, in 2010, um, but I always pined for home. I, I always pined for Donegal. Um, but I, I always had that question mark over, you know, whether I could continue to advance my career and uh, live in Donegal. 
Um, and I suppose I, I took a leap of faith in, in 2015 and I returned home and uh, started working at Primerica. Um, but then what I quickly learned uh, was that Primerica is a large corporate entity and um, made up of actual entrepreneurs. Um, so the art of the possible is at the heart of everyone and everything that Primerica stands for. Um, you can truly own your own career and destiny. Um, and it became obvious to me that, you know, my initial, my initial fears of having to, you know, choose career over living in Donegal were very much unfounded. Um, and today, um, in this new Primerica, I suppose, focused on financial services, I do hold a, a really important position as the CEO of this Pigeon Private Capital business. Um, we are an alternative investment fund management company. We have branch offices in Paris, Frankfurt, Milan, uh, and Madrid. Um, our global head office is based in Chicago. And honestly, sometimes I have to stop and reflect on what an exciting and, and I suppose challenging career that I have. And when we're allowed, um, how lucky I am to be able to travel uh, to these offices on a regular basis while still living at home in beautiful Donegal. Um, it truly is, you know, a global uh, career. But that's just my story. Um, Peach and Private Capital is one part of a wider asset management business called Peach. And Peach is essentially the um, investment management arm of Prudential um, and offers, you know, I suppose, custom investment solutions across a variety of platforms. Um, such as real estate, fixed income, and my own area of private debt. Um, and now Primerica now forms part of this PGM group, um, and our teams work across all of these uh, investment areas. Um, we also continue to support uh, Prudential um, in the actuarial and treasury business. Um, I suppose making what we do a truly special offering uh, for Donegal in the financial services space and I suppose we've also, you know, been very much been able to position ourselves, I suppose, to be able to support Prudential with all, and I suppose, many challenges that financial institutions have faced in the changing landscape, I suppose, that is Europe today. Um, but none of this would be possible without our talent, our people, um, and the support that we have received from all of the bodies that Kieran has mentioned earlier. And we continue to embody that spirit of entrepreneurship um, and our people remain our biggest asset. Uh, our workforce benefits from a really vibrant culture both in and out of the office. So I suppose, you know, to finish for me that the future is bright for Primerica and its people. Um, and we look forward to continuing the, the development of our financial services business, making a real impact to Prudential and PGM. Um, but also can continue to develop our relationship with our external partners so we can continue to deliver real and exciting opportunities for the people and the businesses of Donegal and beyond. That's it for me. And uh, Paul? Sorry, I was on muting myself. Sorry, Chair. Paul Hannigan, President of Letterkenny IT. Apologies for the technical hitch. I'm delighted to be associated with this brand launch today on behalf of Letterkenny IT. It really is a fantastic piece of work and we're delighted to be involved with it. I was just looking back at the history of the college over the last number of years because in 1971, September 1971, this college opened for the first time. We had 75 students registered at that time. So we're going to be celebrating our 50th anniversary in September of this year. And we're moving now towards 5,000 students here in Letterkenny. So you can just see the growth that's occurred over that 50 year period and the contribution that this college has made, not just to Letterkenny, but to the region as a whole. And we now operate on two campuses across the country. We've also campus in Letterkenny, which was formerly the tourism college there in Killybegs as well. So it's great that we have both campuses in operation within the county. It's great that we have such fantastic growth and support from students within the region and outside of the region. Around 50% of the school leavers from County Donegal now make their way to Letterkenny IT which is a great endorsement for what we do and the opportunities that we create for students that come through here. And it's fantastic to be on the call this afternoon with two of our graduates, both Kieran and John McLaughlin are both very proud graduates of, of Letterkenny RTC as it was at the time, um, but have maintained that very strong contact with us and working with us in various different things. 
It's also great credit to the people who had the foresight to set up the college in the first instance. There are lots of parts of this country that would kill to have a college of this nature within their region. And we see that as a real responsibility and a moral responsibility on us to make that work because we've been given the opportunity to do that. And we only do that by working with yourselves, the people in, of the county, the people of the region, all the people on the call today. And those relationships are really important in developing those engagements, the opportunities, and what can happen into the future. And from our sake, looking at Donegal as a county and what has happened here in terms of an educational re revolution to a certain extent, if you look what's happened in the county over the last 20 years, the completion rate of students to leave and circle in the county has grown remarkably to one of the highest percentage completion rates in the country at the moment. And also the transfer rate from second level schools to higher education is also one of the highest in the country, which is in stark contrast to what it was back in the 1970s and early 80s. So the county itself is now placing the energy on education and the opportunities it creates for our young people and for our not so young people as well. The amount of people who are coming back into education, returning to education as lifelong learners, coming onto online programs, all of those possibilities that are opening up for themselves really give some great opportunities. And we now, as we move towards our 50th anniversary, we're moving towards a new dispensation as well. We're working with IT Sligo and GMIT currently to make an application to become a technological university. And I know Mark has mentioned that earlier today, it's really going to be a significant development for this region. And hopefully by January of 2022, we'd be in a position to announce the new technological university for the West and Northwest. At the moment, if you add together the populations of LYIT, IT Sligo and GMIT, you'll find that 25% of that student population is already from County Donegal. So we expect that to increase even further over the coming years. And it'd be really important to have a university location within the county, in Letterkenny, in Killybegs, and our ability to deliver programs from that space. So we look forward to that, and we look forward to the support of all stakeholders within the region to help us with that. And we make sure that the Donegal brand is well used within that. Also, we have major capital developments coming on stream over the next number of years, which will have a major impact. We have a 20 million euro investment on the, on the Letterkenny campus for a, a big extension here. We also have significant development for a sports campus in Letterkenny, which will be a 13 million euro investment. And we hope to start both of those within the next 12 months. And we hope to develop an ocean innovation center on our Killybegs campus, which will help our engagement with that part of the county. So there's a lot of activity happening and we want people to get engaged with that. Some of the things that people have meant about, mentioned earlier about international engagement and the Donegal brand is extremely strong on an international basis. But from our perspective, what we have seen over the last number of years is an increasing number of international students wanting to come to Letterkenny IT. They come for the standard of the programs that we provide, but when they get here and they see what has to be on offer here in County Donegal, it's the warmth of the people, the warmth of the welcome that they get, the safety of the location that they're coming to is really important. And also then the standard of the education is really important from their perspective as well. So we've seen significant growth in both European and non-EU students coming to Letterkenny. And we want to see that continuing over the next while. And this brand will definitely help us in that space. In terms of the economic development of the, or economic contribution of the college, the minister has made reference to that. Letterkenny IT has the highest economic impact of any higher education institution in the country. For every euro that's spent here, there's around five euro created in the local economy because the staff are here, the staff are working here, the students are here, they're contributing locally. And we are really conscious of the economic impact the college makes to the region. But we're equally conscious of the social impact it makes. And the staff and the students make massive contributions within the local region here, whether they're living in Letterkenny or elsewhere throughout the country because the staff are dispersed everywhere. And we also see that through the development of the technology in the, the last year and a half, we've been through tough times in the context of keeping our programs going, but the resilience of the students to keep out of the resilience of the staff, the impact of the technologies that are now available have meant that we've been able to continue. And that has developed our own expertise for future developments and a lot of our programs, particularly in the online area and lifelong area, line area, give us a chance to bring in people from other parts of the country and other parts of the world. So I'm really delighted to be with you this afternoon LYIT is embedded in the Donegal DNA. And the Donegal DNA is embedded in us as an institution and everybody that works and studies here. And we will do everything we can to promote this brand wherever we are on a worldwide basis. Thank you.
Yep, Rosie, please. Okay, I think it'll. Okay. Um, good after good afternoon, everybody, and it's great to be part of the Donegal Place brand. For us at McGee 1866, Donegal is really an intrinsic part of who we are and what we do. But don't worry, I know it's Friday afternoon and I'll save you the 150 years plus of history. But to, suffice to say, McGee was started by a cousin in the 1860s, buying and selling handwoven tweed from southwest Donegal mainly. Five generations later, and today, alongside hand weaving, we have a weaving mill in Donegal town, exporting fabric across the world, and a clothing business supplying over 300 retailers and our own stores in Donegal, Dublin and online with our lifestyle collections across men, women and home interiors. From a commercial and an economic perspective, there is a highly skilled and talented workforce for the manufacturing, operational and design end. On the connectivity side, yes, I, I do admit uh, we're not quite within the M50, but now Dublin is only a few hours down the road and Donegal has a great advantage of the proximity to the north and particularly with Brexit for us, for example, having that access to retailers that we supply in Northern Ireland and the UK and that vital market is really important. Moving to the retail side, Donegal has really seen a rise in both domestic and international tourism. Obviously with a short term loss of international tourism with COVID but that will recover. But historically, looking back, as we know, places like Kerry and Connemara, for example, might have been the more traditional holiday hotspots, but as already referenced, really that linking of the Wild Atlantic Way has really put Donegal on the map for visitors and is so essential. And in addition to that tourism on the retail trade, I would say for us, along with many other retailers across the whole county, that the local community is also a vibrant and vital part of supporting businesses in conjunction with all of the different local county bodies from the council to the local enterprise offices and for Ireland. So as a local business with global exports, Donegal has and continues to be a vital part of our story. And my last point is all about story because Donegal is so much part of our brand identity. Right back to the 19th century, when an early supporter of Donegal textiles, an English woman called Alice Hart, took Donegal tweed as, as an entity to exhibitions in London and Chicago and paved the way for it to become a globally recognized product. Donegal has been central to that uniqueness for us and the other weavers in the county. It is in a sense, the champagne of textiles rooted to centuries old skills right here in County Donegal. For us at McGee 1866, it's our heritage and most importantly, it's our future through our design inspiration and that essential focus on sustainability, using natural fiber raw materials to bring quality and that proper sustainability message. And in turn, Donegal gives us that real point of difference and character to our collections. I think it's about that tangibility in a sense of Donegal, and that's becoming all the more relevant. And this Donegal place brand really shows that as we see on the consumer side, an increasing emphasis on the end consumer wanting to know the origins of what they're buying and where it has come from. And then of course, Donegal comes into its own. But to wrap up, I've, I've commented, I suppose, from the perspective of the textile and retailing sector. However, I hope that all of the advantages of Donegal across its workforce, commercial strength and sense of place are relevant for many other varied sectors as has been highlighted in this Donegal Place brand today. And lastly, from a very personal point of view, I've lived in London in, and Dublin, and I've now come back to Donegal for all that it offers. I'm a big outdoors fan and the lifestyle here is incredible. This weekend, I'll be going swimming in the morning, off mountain running in the blue stacks, and in a few weeks, I'll be out coastal rowing with the Donegal Bay Rowing Club. To have access to all of this wildness on the doorstep is priceless. You just don't get that in Hyde Park. 
So at McGee 1866, we are delighted, we're excited to see the launch of the Donegal Place brand, which captures the very essence of everything that this county has to offer and will be such a powerful platform for business and for people to really promote the county. So thank you very much. And it's great to be part of this. And I think Joy has the video of Killian now. Hello, my name is Killian McLaughlin and I'm the founder of Wild Ireland. In this little patch of native Celtic rainforest, I have created a unique park. Just a few hundred years ago, the Donegal landscape would have been very different, covered in trees and home to wolves, lynx, bears, wild boar, and many other animals that have since gone extinct. I was a practicing solicitor by trade. However, I swapped the wilderness of the courtroom for the wilderness of Donegal. Growing up in this beautiful wild landscape, the forgotten county of Ireland inspired me to delve into the past and explore the lost flora and fauna that our ancestors would have been only too familiar with. It was my passion for the wilderness and wildness of Donegal that drove me to create Wild Ireland. Our ancestors called the wolf Macteer which means son of the land, and that was a term of royalty. Perhaps that respect and reverence of the wolf still remains in our DNA today. This is a sound that our ancestors would have been so familiar with. The feedback that I have had since I opened Wild Ireland and the interest in these unique creatures back living in the forest that they once inhabited has inspired people throughout the country. And I have welcomed visitors from all around the world, keen to learn about the creatures that once inhabited this wild land. Wild Ireland is even home to a family of old Irish goats, once thought to be extinct. A small population of them was discovered in County Mayo. Once known as the poor man's cow, these goats could graze on poor land, providing families with meat and milk. During the famine, the goat provided nutrition for many families. And indeed, our ancestors owe their survival to this unique breed. Wild Ireland is proud to be a part of the breeding program, ensuring the survival of this unique breed. Visitors of all ages are delighted with animals large and small. Many local businesses report an increase in footfall since the opening of Wild Ireland. The positive knock-on effect of the increased visitors to the Inishone Peninsula can be seen in the local filling stations, hotels and restaurants. Donegal has always been known for its wilderness and its beauty. Wild Ireland delves deep into the history of this landscape, dating right back to the Ice Age when humans first arrived on this island. The ongoing COVID-19 restrictions proved very damaging to Wild Ireland. Unlike other businesses, we could not close the door and walk away. We had to continue to care for the animals with all the same outgoings with zero income. The place brand launch will prove vital in the economic recovery of Donegal and indeed Wild Ireland. I'm optimistic about the future and I'm delighted to hear that businesses in the county are working together for a brighter post-COVID future. I am very proud to have been chosen as a Donegal ambassador. Last year, I took my family on a wild staycation right here in County Donegal. We visited many local attractions such as the amazing Grace Yacht Charter, where we encountered wild bottlenose dolphins just off the coast. I have traveled around the world working with animals and having some incredible wildlife experiences. However, the experience that I had with the dolphins on the amazing Grace Yacht Charter rivals any experience that I have had anywhere else in the world. 
The Wild Alpaca Way was another stop on this incredible staycation in Donegal. The rugged and beautiful scenery of Malinhead, coupled with these unusual residents, made for a fantastic day out. I published a video of my staycation adventures across my social media platforms. That video has amassed over a quarter of a million views, with comments from around the world pledging to one day visit Donegal. I'm hugely excited for the future of County Donegal and delighted to be a part of the Donegal Place brand launch. Thanks for watching. And I want to say a very special thank you to all the ambassadors who you heard from this afternoon. So thank you to Kieran, to Charlene, to Paul, to Rosie and to Killian. And we look forward to seeing your participation in, in this ongoing project in the weeks and months to come. And uh, a special word of um, to, to Paul with uh, all the work being done to establish that technological university. Um, just a very, very quick an anecdote. I was saying to Stephen this morning that uh, I my own laptop is, is quite old and I couldn't get the uh, the brand background onto it. So my son lent me his gaming laptop and set me up on Zoom and set up the whole thing for me. And said son is an employee of TCS and a graduate from the computing department of the Arcadi Institute of Technology. So um, I can tell you in this house, two of our ambassadors are more than adequately re represented. Um, friends, we're, we're moving to the end of our proceedings this evening. But uh, before we go, it gives me absolute pleasure to introduce you to two very special musicians. Um, Seamus Maguire is a Sligo-born uh, Letterkenny adopted world-class fiddle player. He's played with Buttons and Bows and the West Ocean String Quartet and quite frankly Seamus would play with anyone who, who wants to play music and spending time in Seamus's company is a joy. He's a man who loves his music and isn't afraid to tell you. Um, he's joined by Steve Cooney who's a, a traditional guitarist and uh, won the RTE Folk Award Lifetime Achievement Award in 2020. Uh, Seamus and Steve have seen their 2020 album release uh, named among the top five trad albums by the Irish Times. Uh, there are two superb musicians, and more importantly, there are two wonderful people who um, embody everything that is great about Donegal and the Northwest. Uh, for a special musical piece, would you uh, please give your best attention to Seamus Maguire and Steve Cooney?
And that was the music of Seamus Maguire and Steve Cooney. Absolutely wonderful. And uh, what a way to end our um, launch this afternoon. I just want to say a very special thank you to everybody who participated in this. Uh, I've been monitoring the chat. It's lovely to see uh, Mairead Niwini, uh, one of the most enthusiastic people in the chat this afternoon. And uh, if there's anyone who exudes Donegal in their DNA and exemplifies the artistic wonder that is in this county, Mairead, uh, certainly does that. I see Vincent Kennedy contributing, uh, Vincent from CETA, and a very positive announcement from them just a few short weeks ago. Uh, the diaspora well represented as well. We had uh, Ronnie from Boston, Rory from Hartford in Connecticut. I see John McDade, and I, well, I just wonder, is that John McDade from uh, Philly? Ex Letter Kenny, who's uh, contributing there. Um, Paddy Bonner, of course, one of the true ambassadors in Donegal now for more years than I suspect he cares to remember. But uh, great to see you two here, Paddy. And uh, thank you to everyone who's been with us. And thanks to everyone who's participated over the course of the event. I see we still have 130 participants. And the fact that 130 people have hung on to the call, I think, is a testament to what you've seen and what you've heard over the course of uh, the past uh, 65, 66 minutes or so. From my own point of view, I want to say a very special thank you to Stephen and to Joy and to all involved in the Donegal County Council Economic Development Unit and uh, OCO, who gave me the honour of being here and being involved in this launch this evening. As someone who is obviously, from my voice, not from Donegal, I'm an adopted son. I came up from Waterford 31 years ago, and it's been my pleasure to become part of Donegal. I often tell the story, and I'm going to leave you with this, 
um, in the early stages, I was here with my then girlfriend, now wife, and we would always say, we'll, we'll go home for the weekend and come back to Donegal on Sunday. And after a couple of years, I suddenly realised that we had started saying, we'll go to Waterford for the weekend and come home on Sunday. And I think that says it all. Thank you very much indeed. Good afternoon.